Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us in this Better Together conversation. And this is all about a value we hold really um, dear to us here at Christ Place, that we are better together. And here's what I know, that for that to happen, we have to listen to one another and get to know each other's stories. I, I have found that when that happens for me, uh, understanding increases, empathy increases, overall relational health increases. So uh, this forum is not about debate. This is about listening. Why? Because we want to be better together. And I'm super pumped because today I have this privilege of being able to interview a friend and someone who has been at Christ Place longer than myself. He has an amazing family. He himself is uh, an incredible individual. So welcome with me right now, the one and only Ruben Ingram. Thank you. So Thanks yeah, the crowd me. is going wild. So. <laughs> I clap for myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You and I will clap for each other because that's all we, we really It'd have. It'd be kind right? of weird, but you know what? What better way to start an interview than to do the weird, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, I, I love that you're here and uh, it's it's obviously it's different when you got cameras on mm-hmm. you, but um, I think you and I can we can engage in this, and yeah. I really enjoyed multiple different conversations we've had leading up to this. Mm-hmm. We've had different conversations about different things, mm-hmm. uh, but not that long ago we talked about the subject and the racial tensions that yeah. are in the air. And I thought before we dive into any of those kind of any, any of that subject matter, mm-hmm. I want everyone to get to know you a little bit. Okay. I mean, for example, I just learned that you actually got married here at Christ Place yep. by the one and only, the Bruce, Bruce right? Pastor Bruce, Bruce Riddle, Riddle. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, give us a little bit more of your story. You didn't grow up in Nebraska. Nope. So give us your story. Okay. Um, before I start, special shout out to Bruce. I remember um, Bruce, is, he's always had a special place in my heart. Mm. Um, when, my, when my sister-in-law passed away, um, there's a small little town in Wisconsin, and I didn't even know where it was. And we're at this funeral, and I pull up, we sit down, and we're in the we're in the church, and I turn around, and Bruce is walking in, and I'm like, so that always had a special wow. place in my heart, Bruce. He's always so your youth pastor. He wasn't your youth pastor. Yeah, he, he was. was. He was youth pastor. He was your youth. Pa- I mean, yeah. but oh, but yeah. you weren't a youth. No, I wasn't a youth. Yeah, you were a we sponsor. Were, yep, we we're part of Rock Solid. Yeah, so he, he drove all the way just to all be part the way of that. to some small Wisconsin town, and he was at the funeral, and I was like, that's that's what it's about. It's that's about really cool. you know, this is my brother. And he was there, and not everybody else sent cars, and it was greatly appreciated. Uh, but I was not expecting to turn around and see him walking through the, the doors of the church. And, you know, that doesn't surprise yeah. me at all. Yeah. Because I know yeah. him. Yeah, so my story, um, born and raised in Chicago. I uh, lived there for 20-something years before I started to like venture west. Um, I am number four in a family of six. Okay. Uh, I, I was probably the favorite, but... Just debatable. <laughs> to all uh, your siblings out there. I will. Right? They all, I'll, I'll get calls. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get calls. Uh, so it. it was it was boy, it. girl, boy, and then boy, girl, boy. So I was number four. Um, we thought we're all pretty close. We yeah. all love each other. And we're very close even now. Um, my mom and dad um, are from the South. Okay. My dad grew up in Mississippi. Mom grew up in Tennessee. Uh, they both, I believe, left the South because of opportunity in Chicago, and they met there. Um, and so we, they, I watched them work, work hard and, uh, stay committed to Christ. I saw them struggle through things and, mm. um, raise us as best as they could, um, through my dad's hard work. You know, we went from a small bedroom apartment to a, a little larger place and a, a larger place. And, um, mm. we just, I just saw the value of work, um, work and being, and having integrity, um, treating people with respect and loving people regardless of where they are. Um, some of the lessons my dad um, taught me um, growing up, and I, I tried to instill that in my own kids, but he had this, uh, he, he never actually said it, but there was this principle of a, a clean slate, and everybody deserves a clean slate. When you meet someone, you may not know who they are, but don't come, in, don't come meeting them with preconceived notions or preconceived ideas of who they are. I've later forgot that lesson in some instances, hmm. but for the most part, I try and remember what those those type of teachings. So that that strikes me as interesting because he, especially having been in the South, he probably mm-hmm. experienced. I mean, yeah. we know racism exists today, mm-hmm. but I'm sure he saw it up close yeah. at times. Not that yeah. the South is the only place. We mm-hmm. know. I'm not trying to to say that it's everywhere, mm-hmm. but um, I'm assuming he lived in a time when it was still pretty tense. Yeah, my mom so. and dad they both have stories of seeing the white only signs and um, being treated a certain kind of way. My mom has a her. Complexion is a little fairer, so she may have got a little different treatment, and she's acknowledged that. Um, 
but hmm. they both have experienced uh, racism in their own their own little towns, and they both have, through God, really through God's grace, um, they've been able to look past that and still show us, hey, you treat people the way that God wants you to treat them. You treat them the right way, and that's to me that's been just miraculous that they can do that. Shout out to your mom and dad because yeah, of their Peter Ruby, their role, the way they yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The way they role modeled for you. Yeah. And this idea that you, you said this on the phone to me, clean slate, give everybody yeah. a clean yeah. slate. And yeah. you remember your dad telling you that. Yeah. That's he, pretty cool. And he might have, I'm probably rephrasing it. It's the way that he taught us to, to do it. I just give it a name, clean slate, but that's how they taught us. He's, I've always seen him interact with people the same way. And it was just compassionate mm-hmm. and just with uh, mutual respect. Um, and it, you just, it's a kid, you pick up all those things. I um, love that. Man. He's very just jovial, very just happy. Um, I've always seen him happy and just with a smile on his face. Even when I was being disciplined, like he was still, <laughs> did it in a, even when I was unjustified to me, it was still done in, in love. So um, I just, I don't know, it was just a spirit about them both yeah, that kind of translates to me. And I, I hope to kind of carry that on and translate to my own kids. Man, I think you are. I think yes. you are, yeah. I think most people that know you would, wouldn't hesitate saying, yeah, that's a man of character, that's a person of integrity, that's someone who's trying to treat everyone equally. Uh, you know, so. I hope so. It's, there are times when you, when, you, when you struggle with things and maybe situations are kind of arise, but I, I believe in my heart that I try and treat people the way that Christ wants me to treat them. And so that's, that I try to love people the way that he, tries, that he loves me. I try to respect people and try to see the best in them. Um, I tend to be a bit more naive because I'm hoping to see the best. Mm. Um, and it's just a, you, you get burned by that, but it's yeah. something I'm willing to, to, to try and uh, accept. Um, and when you, it's, it's more obvious to me now, but when you have parents that grew up in the South and when you have a son or a daughter with these bright, innocent eyes and you know the realities of, of life, I can imagine it's hard for them. Um, you want to protect them and protect them and not let anything happen to them, but you know that this life around is, is hard. And so there's this weird dynamics of mm-hmm. growing up in the South and seeing the horrors of it. How do I protect this innocent ki- this innocent child and still um, and still give them like the tools they need to survive if something were to happen to them? Um, mm-hmm. And I, I still can't imagine what it was like um, having seen all of it and having experience what they've seen. It's so good. And then still come out loving people and the way they yeah. do. Thank God for a healthy mm-hmm. home. Yeah, from mom and dad that yeah. loved you guys, and wow. And they, our church was, I almost can't talk about my upbringing without mentioning my church because we grew up, we were, they were heavily in, into um, into our church. My dad was a, a deacon. Okay. My mom was a missionary, yeah. um, and so on Sunday mornings, Sunday we were at church like from eight to eight to two, and then seven to ten, um, and it was a different. We went to the same. We saw the same people, so it wasn't like it was they we were working this day or people working at night. We yeah. went to, we just went to the same service and then we went to church on Tuesday nights and Thursday nights. Oh wow! So you guys so were there a lot. We were there, yeah. And then you, you saw the people um, almost every week. Um, so it was, but I think it kept us out of trouble. Mm-hmm. I think it, um, I think it kind of reinforced like biblical principles. You're kind of learning them constantly, um, and it reinforced yeah. the values your parents were trying to teach. Yeah, you. yeah, I think so. That's I like really the good. Way, yeah, and so it. Was it a integrated church? No, it, okay. it was like ninety nine point ninety nine percent black. Okay, it was like um, one white woman and maybe another guy from Morocco who had a lot of complexion, um, but it was probably predominantly black. Okay, yeah. So was Christ placing a, a, a diff, very different experience then for from me? That, oh, yeah. From a yeah. from a racial perspective, it was yes. Very, okay. Um, Although we have yeah. diversity, we got we nationalities do. too. Yeah, yeah, we do. We have. Um, we talk about diversity. It's you talk about country cult, the cultures that come from different countries. Um, that's also including that. Um, it was it took me a while to adjust um, coming from Chicago, coming from a predominantly black church. Then I went to I think I moved to Macomb, Illinois, before I came to Lincoln. Okay. And Macomb was yeah. very it was maybe like fourteen thousand people, but eleven thousand were on the campus, and so it was a very small rural town. And I started to kind of break out of this shell of um, being in the black church, like integrated into it. Okay. And then as I came to Lincoln and uh, started going to Christ Place, I think the roles are kind of reversed. So now yeah. I'm kind of more than I'm a minority. Yes. Um, and there's more different cultures in Lincoln and more in Christ Place. But 
there's definitely a shift between between yeah. the two. You know, one of the things that Ruben that came up in our conversation, mm -hmm. which I thought was uh, uniquely communicated, articulated by you, is that mm -hmm. you you said that for there to be reconciliation, mm -hmm. it's going to take two. Yeah, it means both sides have to recognize that there's biases and ignorance mm -hmm. that exist. Can you just talk to me a little bit more about that? Yeah, um, I honestly believe that when you're talking about things being reconciled, they're somewhat torn apart and you're bringing both sides, both broken pieces together to make a whole. Um, and so you have the, the black community or the black community I'm part of and you have the, I guess, non-black community, white community okay. on both sides. Um, so I would have to address them separately. So the, you would like to be able to speak to each group for a second? Yeah. Okay, so, it's your platform, man. You what, do it right now. Now is your moment. Let us have it. I'll get a bunch of phone calls later. <laughs> so in, in the black community, um, there has to be acknowledgement of our own biases and our own prejudice that we have. Um, the, the, little, the little secret within the black community is that a lot of conservatives are a racist. You mean that's like a stereotype? Yeah, it's a stereotype. It's something that you you'll hear in in like the whispers, or you'll hear blatantly, but you'll hear that hey, this conserv these conservatives they're they're, they're racist, and mm. so that's a that's a that's a that's somewhat a, a prejudice that we need to work on. We all have prejudices. I remember yes. um, I was at Russ's market. Um, I like, can't help but smile because you've already told me this story. I know. This is uh, so good. I was at yeah. Russ's market uh, a few months ago. And I was, I was checking. Russ is like they're always crowded, and so I was I was there for a long time anyway. But I'm I'm in I'm in the checkout line. And there's like me, there's a Mexican guy, and then there's a lady in front of him, and the the, the guy between us, I had I had already judged him. Like he had like tax on and like a, a tank top and chains, like whatever checklist you have for like villain or just whatever checklist you have. Like he probably physically fit that checklist he looked like he looked like thug, the, the character yeah, yeah, yeah. like the, that, yeah. the movies like the movies but he looked like a character in these like villain roles and i shouldn't even say that uh but <laughs> yeah right Girl, call him I a thug. yeah but he but i, I prejudged him i was like hey i probably knew his family already i probably knew like where he came from and all just looking at him i knew everything i need to know about him i haven't talked to him anything but i just feel like i knew hmm. i made all these preconceived judgments on him and i should know better <laughs> i should know better right so anyhow um the lady in front of us, the lady in front of him didn't have any money to pay. She uh, apparently didn't have her payment to pay for this, okay. for her stuff. And there's like the weird, awkward silence between a cashier and the customer. And so they're trying to figure out how to handle this, this situation. And then the Mexican guy in front of me, he He's paid, got the tats, right? He got the tats. He paid for her, her stuff. And I was sitting here like, okay. And then he looks at me and he's like, no, that's what we do in our community. We take care of, uh, we take care of everybody in our community, right? He looks at me like, right? And I was like, <laughs> right? And I should have, oh. and I'm sitting here like, if anybody should have known better, like Chicago is pretty segregated. And when we, at my grandmother's house, my grandmother lived in a Hispanic area and it was like, um, you know, Dominican, Mexican, Puerto Rican. And you could see like in their, in their culture, family and country is very important. Yeah. And so you see like there's this there's like this strong family unit in their in their culture. And so I saw that every weekend we go to my grandmother's house and I would see that. You, know, you would see them uh, with their flags on, just proud, pr playing like Mary Austin music. There was like this strong sense of like love for your country, love for your family. Um, and so I, I, I saw that every weekend. I should have I should have at least expected this was a possibility, that this guy, there's Let's more to up. this guy. There's more to him than what I see. Oh, that's good. Right there, so, that I preach. There's more yeah. to him than what you yeah, see. Yeah, there's more to him than what I see. And I should have, that should have been there, but I, for whatever reason, I was just in a weird spiritual state. state. I wasn't, maybe I wasn't seeking God that day. I wasn't fasting to pray. <laughs> whatever the reason, I was just oblivious to what. And you let your biases kick in. I let them kick in. And they, and it was so fast, it was so funny how fast it kicked in. And I told Latrice, I was like, I felt really stupid. Mm. Like, I felt like, I should have known better. Like I should have uh, known the dangers in looking at someone else and just sizing them up and then knowing their all of their credit scores and credit history and knowing everything about him just by looking at him. I should have known better not to do that. Mm, and I did it. Lord help us. Amen. So we I all do like, it, don't we? Yeah, we all do it. That's why I feel like mm. in, in the black community, when you look at 
when, you, when they say conservatives are, are racist, um, you're ignoring missionaries. You, you're, you're saying missionaries are racist. Pe people that have gone and give their lives for missions work. Mi a lot of missionaries may be conservative. Um, there's so many people that do the work that benefits the culture and the black community that may be conservative and that we are saying that they're racist. And I, I, challenge, um, I challenge us as a culture to look at this view of conservatives and say, what is it that we're thinking? Why are we thinking that they're racist? The one, if I, the one possibility or the one possible explanation, and I'm talking to my Caucasian uh, members of my, of my church, the one possibility for this might be, so when you look at, I love data and I look at a lot of data and I'm, I'm pretty, I consider myself objective. I rely on data to make certain kind of decisions. Okay. Um, if I'm looking at crime statistics and I'm looking at like trafficking, I'm mm -hmm. looking at um, assault, uh, domestic abuse. If I'm looking at these numbers in the back of my mind, if I'm seeing like, oh, in Lincoln, there may have been like 25 different kind of um, violent crimes here. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking, okay, these were confirmed, but there's a whole bunch that may not have been confirmed. Um, mm -hmm. And we can mm -hmm. accept that. Yep. We, can look at these, we can look at these stats and we can accept that this is what I see, but there's so much more that's happening that may not be confirmed. When you look at um, sexual assault against women, um, some, women come, some women report, they make reports, some don't. But a lot and don't we, get reported, they yes. They don't get reported, and so we're, we're okay we're not okay with it happening, but we understand that some people may not, for whatever the reason, they may not submit an actual official report. And we're okay doing that when it comes to um, abuse, domestic violence, and trafficking. But when it comes to police brutality, there's, there's like this weird pushback. Um, it's, oh, and I, I've listened to a lot of conservative guys on TV and it's usually, well, the data doesn't support what you're saying. And so there's like this weird dismissal because the data doesn't show that police brutality affects African-American men at a certain percentage. There's like this dismissal of what's happening. Uh, but the reality is that there are cases where it's not being confirmed. Mm -hmm. I just found out yesterday, uh, a good friend of mine um, lived in Chicago too. When he was a teenager, he was handcuffed and a police officer like punched him in the face. Mm -hmm. Um, and that wouldn't have shown up in any kind of report. Right. Um, when I was in high school, I remember having a, um, a police officer pull a gun, a pull a gun on, on me. Um, that wouldn't show up in any type of data. And you were just walking down the street, walking right? Walking down the street. A friend of mine, I was, <clears throat> granted, I was someplace I probably should have been, but that doesn't mean I should have had a gun pulled out on me. Right. Um, and God spared my life and I was able to tell the story. Um, but the reality is it, that wouldn't show up in any kind of data. Um, and I wasn't, there's usually this, when I look at certain scenarios involving um, these really tragic situations, my mindset is usually, it's bad policing or maybe questionable decisions. Hmm. And for, for a person growing, growing up um, in a black household, you know, you're taught to avoid, to eliminate the bad decisions on your part. Um, my mom and dad, we've had conversations about how do you, um, how do you handle yourself when you're pulled over by the police? What do you do? You position yourself a certain kind of, certain kind of way. Mm -hmm. um, make it home is what mom used to tell me. Uh, we'll deal with all the racial injustice afterwards. Make it home. Comply, wow. be, just whatever you gotta do, you just make it home. And those are conversations we have within the black community. Um, but that's something that you, we, it just, just happens. Yeah. And so I feel like the dismissal of when, when blacks come and say, when black people come and say, hey, this is what's happening in our communities, and there's just like, well, the data doesn't support it. I think that brings more anger and more resentment to And it just the fuels maybe an ignorance or a bias yeah. towards a certain people group. Yeah. Yeah, that's and really I, good. And I think that's where the root of um, some of the anger comes from, when it, the distrust that comes from... Um, well, that, that, that's an eye-opener for me. That's really, I don't know that I would have perceive that mm -hmm. but that that's that's really good Ruben mm -hmm. really good um, I like how you drill down because if we're going to talk about racial reconciliation mm -hmm. it takes two yeah um, and so here's what you've done you've talked and I and I'm, I'm 
we're talking primarily to Christ Place Church, although mm -hmm. anybody's welcome to watch these. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to use ourselves as an example. Mm -hmm. So you, you initially, you talked to really actually a broader audience of African-American community, mm -hmm. which is what you grew up in, in a Christian, mm -hmm. very good family, mm -hmm. where was pretty much one-sided politically. Mm -hmm. And you would say, hey, don't be so quick to stereotype conservative people. Yeah. Because you might actually like them if you got to know them. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I mean, right. I think that's yeah. what I'm hearing you say yeah. is don't yeah. be so quick to judge them. Mm -hmm. And um, and then in some ways we're doing what we don't want done to us. We don't want to yep. be uh, judged. And then you're saying to really you're drilling down on this reconciliation. Now you, in some ways you're talking to conservative Caucasians mm -hmm. saying, hey, don't be so quick to dismiss mm -hmm. and minimize that there's abuse of power taking place mm -hmm. just because all the data isn't there because a lot of people keeping the data may be people of that same race. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, and I think that's beautiful. And mm -hmm. I think we've got to like, we gotta be that brutally honest with one another, yeah. right? I think for true, if we're talking about racial reconciliation um, and if the goal is to have things reconciled, you have to bring you have to come to the table and bring both um, both issues to the table um, and come with your mask off. Um, this may be a surprise to you, but years ago I was asked to speak in front of Christ Place, and it's not a surprise. I love it. It was. And I'm, I'm not a pastor. I won't. I'm not. <laughs> that will be happening again. But I, um, I I remember talking about wearing a mask, and my the main point of that topic was. When you have a mask on, you don't really know who I am. You see what you see. You see what I'm letting you see, or you or, or what you want to see, but you're not yeah. really seeing me. Yeah. Um, when I take that mask off, you can see me who, as I really am, and I can see you as you really are. And yeah. until we both take off our mask, we'll, there'll always be this barrier between us. Mm. Um, and it shouldn't be. For, for, for the citizens of the kingdom, that shouldn't be the case. Um, we mm, both should so bear good. each other's issues. We, your concern should be my concern. Um, and so as kingdom citizens, that's, I think that's the most important part. Let's take off our mask, this side and this side, and let's reconcile and have true racial reconciliation. Um, that's where it really begins. That's so good, man. Because uh, let me unpack just for a second there, because you just mm -hmm. said some really, really good, deep stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and, and first, I want to say, before I jump to that, I want to say thanks for like drilling down on racial mm -hmm. reconciliation because while it's not just a conservative, I thank God for our church because we have progressives and conservatives. Yeah. Um, but you were brave enough to address the conservatives mm -hmm. while at the same time, you embrace some of the conservative values yeah. and you wanted to expose potential stereotyping from the African-American community. They're so mm -hmm. you kind of hit on several mm -hmm. deeper issues that... Mm -hmm. um, uh, but then ultimately you're saying, hey, we got to step up regardless if we're progressive or conservative mm -hmm. and recognize there's a higher citizenship mm -hmm. that doesn't have. And listen, be glad that we're Americans. Yeah. But there's a higher citizenship. I, and that's yeah. that's that we're brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm -hmm. I honestly believe. So I, I can't remember. Um, I can't remember where I read this, where I heard this. But there was a comment made that kind of struck me as odd. And it was. It was like yada yada yada, my city too, <laughs> yada yada yada. Yeah. And I remember thinking, it's, 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 it was weird to me um, because if you if you picture like this patriotic American, this person who loves their country, um, it's usually like a blonde hair, blue eyed, blonde hair, blue eyed person, a Caucasian person. Uh, but the reality is, I can smell, I, I'm just patriotic as this person you're imagining. My dad served in the military. He was in South Korea for a little bit. Uh, my brothers served in the military. Mm. Um, I would have served, but I'm legally blind, so I couldn't have. Um, I pay my tithe, I pay my taxes, I give <laughs> to the poor. All the things you do that, that are patriotic. You like, like apple pie, that's the No, oh. I don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's why. That, that's the reason for exclusion. That's where we draw the line, I guess. To draw the line. Um, we, we were close. <laughs> but, <laughs> almost. Almost, almost. No, almost, but, just, no, but you know what? Hey, first of all, thank you to your dad mm -hmm. and your brother for serving. Mm -hmm. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, they, and you're right. You're mm -hmm. about as, you're as American as anybody. Yeah, I need my own, my own coin, my own stamp or something. No. Um, <laughs> but no, so it's, 
I, when you think of somebody as patriotic, like I belong here too. Yes, this you is, do. This is my yes, country. You do. It is your um, country. Blood yes. was lost on both sides, but we, our contribution to matters too. And this is my country. I, um, I hold conservative views and I tend to vote conservative as well, but I belong here. And I think, um, I think the statement is my city. This is my city too. Like Amen. we pay taxes, we pay property taxes. I have a mortgage. Like this is, we belong here just as much as you do. You almost feel like when that statement was said, it was being exclusive. Yeah, and I wonder, I wonder if, if another issue maybe one side has versus the other is, there's this sense of you don't belong here. Mm. And, and I think if, if that's the case, we belong here just as much as anyone else. Like yeah. we, this is our home too. This is our place too. Uh, I'm building to make this country a better, better country just as much as you are. And I care just as much as you do. I care about my own kids' future and I want the best for them too. We essentially want the same thing want the in same a lot thing. of ways. We just, just, yeah, either we just want it differently or we just view it differently because of our skin colors, but we both want the same thing. And so this tr statement, my city just kind of just, it struck me as odd um, because it, there was this like, this is mine and yours, and it's like, wait a minute, this is this is ours. I belong here. I like this is that. Mine too. It's our city. Um, yeah. This is my country. I and I'm I'm okay being it. I'm proud of being American. It's not. I honestly believe this is the the best country, and I don't have any shame at all in saying that. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't. It, it stuck me as odd that this person said, "This is my this is my city," when this is my city too, uh, and I feel like maybe that's where some of the what is it about the other cultures that you look at us and you, you say that this is mine and not yours, when this is ours. Hmm, that's good. And I think that, I think that translate over to the kingdom, the life of the citizen and kingdom. Um, it's, we're all, if you're a citizen and I'm a citizen, um, and we're both in the citizen and in, in, in the kingdom of God, that ultimately is what matters the most. That's so good, um, man. At the end of my life, there, one day I'm gonna die and it's a reality of, of the way God set this thing up. Um, one day I'm going to leave this, this planet and I'll take my last breath. When that day happens, the most important thing that's going to matter is my relationship with God and whether or not I accept the Jesus as my personal Amen. Savior. Everything Amen. else, race, ethnicity, none of that's going to matter. Citizenship in God's kingdom will be the defining moment that determines everything else. Uh, and if we lose track of that, um, then the enemy will continue to win. And that's why racial reconciliation is important. We need to be together doing the work of the kingdom, yeah. progressing the kingdom. And I feel like a lot of the things may cause division in that work. Um, and so I'm looking forward to, to one day being in a place where we all can kind of um, see each other for who we really are. I love I'm, that. I'm a kingdom person, you're a kingdom person, your pain is my pain. And let's keep the kingdom first. The kingdom first. And I remember, an example of that was 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 Bruce. Bruce when he Pastor Bruce coming back, yeah, man. When I he love came that. to when he came to the funeral and he was there. So uh, I don't know that we got all that story. So he not only married you, but then at some point you had a death in the family. Yeah. And where was it at? We, so there was a in Wisconsin, there's this little I can even know the name of the town. There's a little town in Wisconsin. And I remember having a hard time trying to find a location that was GPS. We found this town and we're at this funeral, my sister in law passed away. And I sit down in my little seat and we're just waiting. And I turn around and Bruce was walking through the doors, Bruce Riddle. And I remember thinking this, that's kingdom. That's so when good. When I'm a citizen and you're a citizen and we're both children of God and you see I'm suffering, you see I'm hurting. Kingdom people come, they come and help kingdom people. They bear each other's they burdens. They bear each other's burdens, yeah. And, and biblically, um, God is sent, God's requiring of you if the love that you show other kingdom citizens will determine if you love me. And if you can look at me being a kingdom citizen and not love me or not feel not feel love or my own pain, then there's some evaluation needs to happen in you. Um, and That's so I, I would challenge you to think about why is it that you're looking at me, a kingdom citizen, and you're not feeling the love of Christ towards me. That's so good. And that, I would challenge a person to do that. But You know what, I, I would love to say maybe to um, Caucasian brothers and sisters mm -hmm. in Christ. That's why this is an important issue because we mm -hmm. need to be able to bear some of the burden. Yeah. And we need to, like Bruce so mm -hmm. illustrated, 
we need to like, we need to come alongside mm -hmm. and show support, and love, yeah. and be okay with having hard conversations with each other, mm -hmm. taking off the mask, right? Yeah, on both and sides. We're scared of yeah. on both sides. Both sides. Take off the mask. And we, need, and we need to be okay being awkward, mm -hmm. okay with some uncomfortableness, mm -hmm. and and be okay to find a way, even if we disagree, to keep loving and persevere with the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. I love what you just said there. I'm going to wrap this this conversation up, but I can't think of a of a better way to draw this thing to close to a close than than what you just said that that we have to be able to love one another. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking of the passage where Jesus said by your love. He's talking about believers, followers. Yes. By yes. your love for one, yeah, another, one another. That's yes. when the world's going to know. Yes. And it's that citizenship that you talked about in heaven mm -hmm. that we mm -hmm. have with one another. That takes precedent even over our national citizenship. I firmly believe that. that and so yeah. that love needs to be over mm -hmm. everything else, and it needs to like almost draw us to the table mm -hmm. where we lay down our mask. We kind of are willing to be honest about our own biases, mm -hmm. and and find a way, man, find a way to recognize that we are better together. Mm -hmm. So good, man. Hey, any last thoughts? No. I think that's it. I, I'm <laughs> okay. looking forward to, to the Grove. I'm looking forward to the yeah. Kingdom Citizens. Um, really, really being there for one another. I, that's, that's what I'm looking forward to seeing. And Amen. I think that's when real reconciliation, re racial reconciliation happens. I love that, man. Love that. Okay, Christ Place, uh, thank you so much for joining us in this conversation of being better together. Man, I, I'm still trying to take it all in, but I love the fact I just like this idea that there's a higher citizenship and we're called to model to the world what it looks like to take off our mask and begin the conversation, have the tough uh, conversations, be honest about some of our own biases. And by that kind of love, by that kind of dynamic taking place amongst people, uh, we can be a role model to the whole world and draw people to Christ. So uh, one more time, man, thanks Ruben for joining me. This has been so good. Hey. Christ Place Church, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what your circumstance is right now, but I know this, man, we are better together. And I also know this, even as Bruce showed up at that funeral, man, we gotta be there for each other. And know this, my friends, you are not alone.